Guys, it's Dragon Cannon again, and this is my second tutorial. Orbital Mechanics 101. Orbital Mechanics for dummies. We are not gonna do any math right now. Not really, anyway. Um, I, for the purposes of this tutorial, have gone ahead and put a ship in orbit. It is just the Kerbal X, the stop. Kerbal X, except for I have added an advanced SAS module to make it easier for me, and a MechJeb module, which we will both use to do maneuvers, but also because of the great information it gives us, which will allow us to understand orbits better. I said we're not going to do any math, but we will have to understand what these various numbers mean. So, the first thing we're going to talk about today our, our orbital parameters. We are in a nice, fairly circular orbit here. I can see if I look in my map view, you can go to your map view by pressing M for anyone who does not know. And there are these two little arrow things. Um, I can hover over them. Apoapsis. Apoapsis is the highest point in your orbit. Like apogee refers to the Earth. Apohelion refers to the sun, and apoapsis is generic, it can be anything. So, we can say, for example, apoche for Kerbin. Apo means the highest point. So, and then you have periapsis, which is the opposite, the lowest point. So, as you can see, 70 kilometers by 73 kilometers. That is pretty close to circular. Um, so, that is our first parameter, is eccentricity is how far away from circular it is. The bigger the number, the more elliptical your orbit is an elliptic. An ellipse is a stretched circle. So you'll see that in a moment. This is mostly a circle and it will be, as you can see here in my MechJeb display, eccentricity 0 0.002. So very small. Of course, an eccentricity of 1 would actually be what's called a hyperbolic orbit, which is a curb and escape. It would not come back around. It will escape this gravity well and go into the gravity well of the sun in this case. So, for the moment, however, we are in a fairly circular orbit. When you are adjusting orbits, sometimes things are a little counterintuitive to the way you would think they would act on Earth. As an example of this, when you burn prograde, let's go back. Prograde is forwards. It is the direction that you are currently going on your navigation ball. It is indicated by this yellow circle right here. Um, I have the ship pointed right under it right now. Then you have retrograde, which is its exact opposite, the opposite direction of where your ship is going. I went past it. And in the, it is indicated also by a yellow circle, but it has an X in it. So that will tell you the reverse. And if you want to go faster, you burn towards prograde. And if you want to slow down, you burn towards retrograde. However, it is not that simple. As you will see now, if I burn retrograde, you can see where my ship is. I am on the bottom right part of the planet right here. So if I burn retrograde, it will make my orbit bigger on the other side of the planet. As you can see, it's going out, my apoapsis. It's growing 250, 270, 280, 290, 300. So we will stop now. And that has made us speed up here to 2,473 meters per second. Once we reach the apoapsis, however, we will actually be going slower. The bigger your orbit, the further away you are from the body you are orbiting, the slower you go. But you have to speed up to get out to those outer orbits. 
So it's a little bit counterintuitive until you understand the mechanics. So I'm sure a lot of you already know this, so uh, I hope you don't feel like I am talking down to you. I hope um, everybody will understand orbital mechanics one day. Because hopefully one day some of us will be living in orbit. So now if I want to make a new circular orbit at this higher altitude, I can go ahead and add a maneuver node. And again, I will, circuit, I will pull out prograde. So I'll be burning prograde there until the orbit gets to be about circular. And I'm going to go ahead and tell MechJab to, to execute that node. Fortunately, we have plenty of fuel in this rocket, so we need not worry. In the meantime, while he is going out there, I will explain some more of the um, orbital parameters. So we've described the apoapsis, the highest point in the orbit, and the periapsis, the lowest point in the orbit. Orbital speed, um, that's pretty obvious, your orbital speed. And as you see, it's 1,700 now. So we're going 700 meters a second slower than we were at the periapsis. Orbital period is the amount of time it will make take to make one complete orbit around the planet. Time to apoapse, time to periapse, those again are uh, pretty basic. Inclination, that is how many degrees inclined is your orbit, how big of an angle is your orbit off from being equatorial. Again, we're very, very close right now to being a perfect equatorial orbit, but not entirely perfect, so we're 0 0.6 degrees inclination right now, which is really not bad at all. So those are your basic orbital parameters, and again, you can adjust your orbit outward, as we have shown. Now, if I were to burn retrograde and slow down right now, that's prograde, we'll turn around the other way. It will make the opposite end of my orbit go lower. This is how you re-enter, or you land, or any of these things. You point retrograde, lower your orbit until you re-enter the atmosphere, as we will do now, and we'll get some fireworks. We'll go ahead and crank up this engine, because why not? Get it down to like 30, and we can re-enter that way. And other than that, that is the most basic orbital mechanics. No math. Just need to understand what the numbers you're reading do. Maybe in later episodes I will explain some of the mathematics behind it. But for the time being, the most important points are as follows. One. Your apoapsis on Kerbin and periapsis must both be above 70 kilometers to have a stable orbit. The atmosphere ends at 70 kilometers on Kerbin. In real life, this is not the case on Earth. Earth's atmosphere doesn't end, ever. It just gets thinner and thinner and thinner off into infinity throughout the whole universe. Um, Thus, the space station, which is orbiting at about 420 kilometers above the Earth as we speak, as it has been for many, many years, must every now and then readjust itself, reboost its orbit to make sure it does not re-enter. Um, so other than that, uh, you need to remember to 
Always know prograde from retrograde. Prograde from retrograde. Now, prograde and retrograde sometimes also describe your orbit. A prograde orbit is an orbit that goes to 90 degrees, that goes east, or goes with the rotation of the planet that you are orbiting. Uh, whereas a retrograde orbit is the opposite, going the reverse. Um, you very, very rarely, if ever, are going to use retrograde orbits. They're kind of a waste of energy. Uh, when you launch to a prograde orbit, you get to take advantage of the rotation of the planet. So I recommend always going prograde. And here we're getting some burn, we're getting some burn. And on that note, I hope you guys all have a good one. Hope you learned something. And see you next time.